everybody, welcome to another Trim Craft Tuesday video. This week I am scrapbooking with the Paper Addicts Retro Days paper pad. Um, the background I'm using is just, um, it was a cheap pad of textured white and cream 12 by 12 paper that I bought in the range and I'm using the cream one here because I thought it would go nicely with the colours of this paper pad. Oh, I started off off camera actually just drawing a circle on the on the layout with a pencil. Um, I used my bin of all things because I don't have a compass to draw with, you know, to draw circles with. So I used the base of my rubbish bin and I didn't keep it in on camera because my bin was full of rubbish at the time. But anyway, that's what I used. And then I started off fussy cutting a load of bits and pieces from the paper pad, mostly these sort of very simple flowers here so those weren't too hard to do and then I started cussing, fuss, cussy futting, cussy futting, oh dear it's very hot today, fussy cutting other bits but then very unlike me I got really fed up of it. Now regulars to my channel know I love fussy cutting but I just, I wasn't in the mood so what I did is I got my first edition digital dies set and this is the florals and foliage one I think and I just used those to cut out a load of leaves in different shapes and yeah I'm kind of happy I did that because they're nice big shapes that I can use to make the wreath that I'm going to make so I've got those ready there and then I thought I think we need another colour like a contrasting colour in the background um, I think that will just help the whole layout so I chose Distress Oxide in Bundled Sage I think it is, then just doing the packaging technique, smooshing it on some packaging, adding a little bit of water and then just plopping it down onto the layout like that. As I said, it's just a nice contrasting colour to add just a little bit something extra to the layout. And then while I was doing that, my silhouette was cutting the other load of leaves and foliage and stuff from those first edition digital dyes and um, just because I wanted different colours, just not just orange ones, I wanted some darker sort of browny ones as well so I'm just gonna dry off my distress oxide splattering and splooshing here Um, sometimes when you get sort of heavy bits that aren't are being stubborn about drying I'm too lazy to use the heat tool for ages so I just dry them off with a bit of kitchen towel so that's what I did there and then I'm just gonna start arranging all my bits and pieces to create this florally retro-y colours uh, wreath here just um, reminding myself that I don't need to do the whole thing because I am going to put my photo in the bottom right so I don't need to fill in the whole wreath and yeah that's just what I'm going to do for the next few minutes really um most bits are going to go down with glue dots when you do something like this the easiest way to do it is to put the biggest pieces down first and then just work your way up to the smallest pieces but I do tend to leave a couple of the little, the bigger pieces just to one side so I can bring them in later on if I want to so it looks a little bit more natural rather than you know hand done and manufactured as it were if because it yeah if you have all the big pieces then all the medium pieces then all the little pieces it looks a little too fake I suppose so I always keep as I said a few from different sizes aside so I can bring those in at the end so I've got majority of my leaves down and then I'm going to put some of the flowers down add some of the, the sort of the longer leafy flourishy bits I really really like those pieces I have about five of these feathers that I fussy cut from the paper pad before I got really really fed up of it and um, so there's a few of those sticking out and I like those as well it just adds a slightly different element from the florals and the leaves and stuff like that some of the ones that I used I cut with the silhouette I'm going to turn over and use the other pattern on the other side I don't do that too much because you can sort of tell that it, they're not supposed to be cut on that side I suppose but it was nice to have more colour options and then yeah just I'm just going to keep going here so I, as I said before I've got like my flowers I'm going to go back and add a bigger leaf I've got these small leaves which were fussy cut as well these little pink ones so I'm just adding a few of those sticking out in various places and some things are going to go down with tacky glue and some things with glue dots I don't really know why some go down with one adhesive and some with others I just that's the way I did it back in my photo here just chose some papers well I chose one paper actually from no two no sorry I'm so it's hot as I said I'm not doing very well with voiceovering today I literally just ordered a desk fan off Amazon to arrive tomorrow because I'm just not, not coping very well. Anyways, 
what was I doing? Backing my photo, just chose bright colours to back it to hopefully lift it up a little bit from that busy wreath background and propping it up on foam as well again to help lift it up from the background. I was using very very cheap foam adhesive there which is why I also add the tacky glue to it just so I'm very very sure it's going to stay down. And then I'm going to add like a couple more of the fussy cut and digitally cut bits and pieces kind of going over and coming out from under the photo just to make it look like I haven't just plonked it down on top of the wreath like it's more uh, blended in with everything. Here I am going to add some of these Simply Creative um, 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 gems, gems that's the word I'm looking for, totally just poof out of my head. Anyway those are the 10 millimeter gold gems. I can't usually link those because they seem to be quite hard to find online even in on Amazon. Um, I tend to buy them in store at the range or sometimes you see them in other craft stores. And then these gold stickers I'm adding here are just from the works and I'm going to use the title one and some of the little heart ones as well and I've realised I've totally forgotten to talk about the photo. I basically just dug through my mum's collection of photos and tried to find something that was like suitably retro and had like the same kind of colour scheme. I don't know the exact date of this photo. I feel like it's going to be very late 70s or very early 80s. It's my mum. She's got a very retro haircut in it. I'm loving it. And my elder sisters um, as bridesmaids, I think they were. This is long, long, long before I was born. So I can't really tell you too much about the photo, but I thought it would just match all the colours and stuff really nicely. And then I'm finishing off with, of course, some gold splatters because Splatters were required and I already had added the gold on the title and with the gems and stuff So just to finish off adding those and then this layout is complete. So there we go Thank you so so much for watching I will leave links to stuff that I have used in this video down in the description box Please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed chat to me down in the comments and I'm going. Thanks again. Bye. Bye